Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about endometriosis. Endometriosis is a condition where cells of the endometrium are growing outside of the uterus. The lining of a woman's uterus is called the endometrium. Think of the endometrium as layers of tissue that build up along the inside of your uterus. And when you have a period, these layers fall away from the walls of the uterus and they leave your body through the vaginal canal. Your body grows a new endometrium with each menstrual cycle to prepare for a fertilized egg. The endometrium is where the egg will implant and grow into a fetus if it becomes fertilized with sperm. But if you're not pregnant, then you'll shed this endometrial lining each month. And under normal circumstances, during your menstrual cycle, the blood will flow downwards and throughout through the cervix and the vaginal canal. But with endometriosis, the menstrual fluid, and along with it, cells of the endometrium regurgitate upwards through the fallopian tubes and into the pelvic cavity during the menstrual cycle. Then this endometrial tissue begins to grow in your ovaries, bowel, and tissues lining your pelvis, causing growths, which are called endometrial implants. Then as you go through the hormonal changes, which accompany your menstrual cycle, this misplaced endometrial tissue will grow thicken and break down, just like the normal endometrial tissue within your uterus. But once it breaks down and becomes trapped inside your pelvis and has nowhere to go, this trapped tissue inside your pelvis can then cause irritation and scar formation and adhesions which bind the pelvic organs together. Then this could cause painful periods, cramps one to two weeks around menstruation, heavy menstrual bleeding or even bleeding in between periods, infertility, pain during sexual intercourse, discomfort with bowel movements and low back pain, which might occur at any time during your menstrual cycle. The underlying causes of endometriosis are unknown. Modern medicine states that it may come from higher than normal levels of estrogen. They also feel that genetics may play a role since you have a greater chance of developing endometriosis if someone in your family has also developed it. And while all this may be true, Ayurveda takes it one step further and provides treatments and another explanation which is more comprehensive. We look at the underlying mechanics and energies behind the scenes which are at work controlling all of our body's functions. Now since they're just energy and they can't be seen, they therefore go unnoticed. Now if you recall from previous videos, there's three governing principles inside of our bodies, known as vada, pitta, and kapha. Vada controls various movements within your body, such as the churning of food clockwise in the stomach, the movement of thoughts through the mind, and the circulation of blood within your circulatory system. There's a subsection of vada, known as a subdosha of vada, which is called apanavada. Apanavada resides in the pelvic region, and it's responsible for the downward flow throughout that area. This means that it moves the food downwards through the digestive tract, it moves the baby downwards during delivery, and it moves the blood downwards during our menstrual cycles. But if the vata gets disturbed from too much quick movement during the month, from rushing or multitasking, from too much talking or too much stress, from going to bed past 10 o'clock at night, or burning the candle at both ends, then the apanavada mistakenly flows upwards. This can then create acid reflux and regurgitation of food upwards when eating, or a long labor as the energy is flowing upwards during delivery when it should be flowing downwards, which will prevent the baby from exiting downwards easily. But this upward flow of apana can also cause the blood to mistakenly flow upwards during the menstrual cycle and endometriosis to begin growing in the pelvic cavity. Fortunately, Ayurveda has many therapies to help women control their vata and various treatments to encourage the downward flow of apana, not only during the menstrual cycle, but throughout the whole month. The ancient textbooks discussed various codes of conduct for women to adhere to during their menstrual cycle to allow the blood to flow downwards. For example, it's recommended for women to rest as much as possible during their cycle. Rest, put your feet up, Try not to go to work or even stand in the kitchen too long during the heavy flow days. Don't talk too much or have extended baths. 
avoid exercising during your cycle because too much movement forces the blood upwards. Don't have any sexual activity during your cycle and don't wear tampons or cervical cups. All these encourage the blood to flow back up the fallopian tubes. Just wear normal pads and allow the blood to flow downwards and out. And resist the tendency to, to rush during the month. Rushing moves the apana upwards, which will be reflected in your next menstrual cycle. Ayurveda has herbs which can heal the uterine lining, herbs which can recalibrate the ratio between estrogen and progesterone, and even herbs which are helpful in moving the apana back down. There's herbs to prevent a heavy menstrual flow and treatments to prevent pain during the menstrual cycle. Contact your Ayurvedic physician to see which treatment works best for your specific case though. The modern medical approach of using hormones and dangerous drugs to take away the menstrual cycle could have some serious consequences later on down the road. Try using more natural remedies which get to the root of the problem and don't have the serious side effects as the pharmaceuticals. I hope this video helps you as you search to both treat or prevent endometriosis from occurring in the first place. Thank you.